Now we pause to take a look here as Operation Thunderbolt was the successful counter-terror hostage rescue mission carried out by commandos of the Israel Defense Force at Entebbe Airport in Uganda back in 1976. This year therefore marks 45 years since that daring raid that sought to rescue the 94 mainly Jewish and Israeli hostages and the 12-member airline crew who had been separated from the overall 248 passengers on that Air France plane hijacked by members of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Overall, 102 hostages were rescued, while well, four were killed in the mission, along with the IDF commander, Yoni Netanyahu. But we have the honor today of being joined by Joshua Shani, the lead pilot in that Entebbe rescue operation, currently the chief executive officer, officer of Lockheed Martin Israel. Uh, thanks so much for being with us here and want to start going straight at that night and in your memories of us. Tell us about the feeling you had uh, at, at the helm of that aircraft flying low in that darkened plane into Entebbe Airport. I didn't have uh, too many feelings because I was so busy with planning the mission and make it successful. So I, I act like a robot, just did the right thing. And the feeling came only after we landed back in Israel 20 hours later with, uh, with the hostages. I think that probably goes for most of the members on that rescue uh, team there as well. But I have to bring up, of course, uh, the commander of that, of that uh, commander unit there, Yoni Netanyahu, who was killed almost immediately at the head of his rescue force. How did that incident play out in, in largely the beginning of, of the mission there? How did that affect things? Again, it did not affect it uh, during the operation. I did get a man, you know, Yoni, Yoni flew with me, actually. He was sitting or lying or sleeping next to me some of the flight. I was, I knew that he was hit immediately when they raided the terminal. I didn't know that it was fatal. I just found out about it when uh, the doctor came and told me the bullet came, went through his heart and he's got no chance. So I cannot, I mean, it was very, very difficult for us to absorb it, that the top guy, the head guy of the special force is dead. So it was kind of a mixed feeling. Once we succeeded, we have the hostages, we fly them back and we lost the top guy. So very mixed feelings. And so the given 45 years of perspective, I'm curious how perhaps your own perception of the mission has changed, but certainly how that mission in the moment even changed the world's perception of what was possible in the face of, of a spate of 1970s hijackings and terrorism. Uh, how, did, how did it feel in that moment? Did it feel as impactful as it does still 45 years later? Uh, the, uh, the feeling immediately after we landed uh, or during the operation, you know, I did describe it to you, or we were busy. But after we landed, we did not realize the magnitude of this kind of operation. We just did not. It took some time to absorb it. Maybe when uh, when I got back home and my father, who was a Holocaust uh, survivor, get, came with lots of friends and he looked at his older son that was a refugee in Bergen-Belsen and now he's leading elite pilot in the operation like this, I started to realize how big it really is. Over the years, it only went up. It's unbelievable how how many people still interested, ask questions, invite me to speak to them. It came down a little bit uh, lately, but I don't know why it's it's climbing again 45 years after. I hope that uh, I'll be around uh, 50 years to still talk about it. So you mentioned that, uh, that really answers this question, perhaps just your father as a small example there, the, the impact of this mission's success on, on the small young state of Israel at the time here. You feel that that was the impression really nationwide that there's just the the awe of what was what was accomplished here the daring and the daring nature of it the uh, you got to understand there's a, i can use only one word about uh, how we why we succeeded and the word is yiddish american hebrew chutzpah we just had lots of chutzpah i mean nobody there that we are so stupid to fly 5000 kilometers with lots of guys in, to a place unknown, and we don't know the condition there, and 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 just do it do it right. So I think that after we did this, the world, the uh, fight against terrorism changed dramatically, because once we we showed it to the world, it's possible. Uh, there were a few more attempts, and we don't have time now 
to go over the history of, uh, of special operations and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's just the chutzpah to do it and the sh- to show the world that we do not give up on terrorism, period. True then, true today. And another uh, somewhat of a lighter note here. There was obviously a lot of attention, as you mentioned, all these years on the on this mission. The, the, surely the success of it now. There's Hollywood production, Operation Thunderbolt, with Kirk Douglas in the lead there. Were you uh, referenced for that movie? Were you involved in the production of the film? Did they come to you, guys who were actually there, to recreate it? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this because, yes, the answer is absolutely yes. The first version of the movie was by Golan, from a company, Golan Globes, a uh, famous Euro Hollywood and a group. And uh, I was nominated by the Israel Air Force to be the assistant director to this guy. But the reason was not that I do, I do not understand anything about making movie, <laughs> movies. The reason was that to make sure that he is he's not revealing secrets. So my job was to make sure that we kind of minimize what he tells in this movie. And I did. Although at the end of the day, uh, it was Operation Thunderbolt, that was the name. Right. At the end of the day, it was quite accurate, the first version, many, many years ago. Fascinating to hear your, the inverse role you played there to actually contain the story versus really get it out there to, to those Hollywood filmmakers. Uh, again, thank you very much, Joshua Shani, again, the lead pilot on that Entebbe rescue operation. And from all of us, truly, I can say thank you for the your service there and the risks that you took, I'm sure, much beyond that operation as well. Again, thanks for your time. My pleasure and glad to be here.